So, um, quite a few years ago, I got my dad a uh, Del Key, uh, which is a, uh, all the time, thought it was Boston Whaler. As you can see, it was Badged Whaler. Um, it was older, beat up. I think it actually had title from late 70s, mid 70s. Uh, we've had a problem with it cracking on the trailer, and I, uh, you, know, you can see some patches here, right? Um, I also see some holes. I'll get into that here in a second. But, uh, you know, under further inspection um, and doing some research, found out that there are no ribs in these, which I kind of knew. They were filled with foam. So, uh, somebody, you can see, see that crack down? It looks like they may have separated this at once and redone the foam. Um, however, it looks like they poured from the top and didn't get everything full. So, as I drilled some holes, here's what I found. They're not too bad. Come up here, though. And that's a pretty good little distance that it's missing foam. So, I got some AB foam over there. Uh, decided, instead of tearing it all out, because the inside is absolutely beautiful. Like I said, I'll flip it over and show it to you in another video. Um... My dad redid it with all teak and everything, and it would have been a lot of work. So, to hopefully try to remedy the situation, uh, I got part two-part foam, uh, four-pound density. Uh, comes in foam side A, foam side B, pour it into cups, mix it together, and that's just the residue of what was left that I couldn't get to pour. So... If you take a look, I poured a small batch on the first one. You can see it filled from there to there. Um, second batch, I poured in this hole here. And it filled there. Right away, it filled to there. Quickly, filled to there. And started there. So I'm going to probably pour this hole next and hope it kind of goes that way. But um, let's see if I can kind of show you. If you look here, you know, easy, it flexes down to that. And let me go over back over the other side. And you can see up here quite a bit of hole too. So if I go over and down to the other side where I've just filled... Now look, the old flex. So my hopes are we're gonna fill here, here, and they say a pour on a warm day will run up to about five cubic feet. I decided to go, my dad actually drilled the holes for me. Um, he had time yesterday. I kind of gave him some directions on how I, I kind of wanted it. My thought was the keel and, well, the keel and then the side would be kind of help be stop points because sure they need foam down here for flotation, but that's not where the rigidity needs to be. Um, so trying to do it with from the bottom is kind of a new one. I've done some foaming before, filling voids um, on a sailboat. Uh, but first time I've tried to do it with something a bit more structural. Then we'll go over top of this with a layer, another layer of mat probably, and if I can talk them into a flexible epoxy, uh, something like G-Flex uh, to lay the mat with, which if there is still some flex, it shouldn't crack because G-Flex actually is a flexible epoxy where most epoxies are extremely hard. So I'm just going to kind of wait and let these cure. Uh, my next pour will probably be here because it should be 20 minutes between the two adhering to each other. So if my next pour is up here, this one will be close to 20 minutes probably by the time I'm done. Um, and then I'll, I'll do a center pour either in these holes or those depending on how it fills. Um, and that, I believe, is going to be how, without completely replacing and, and cutting the boat apart, 
um, you can at least repair a foam job that was done wrong. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hope this helps somebody else on their project.